This is Ali Hussein Kasim from Ali Talks Tech. In this week's weekly roundup of news, of tech news across Africa and news that would affect tech across Africa and the world, we are covering an interesting report from BCG, that's the Boston Consulting Group. They've just released their global payment report. We will also look at Ethiopia's bold move regarding using renewable energy or excess renewable energy to mine bitcoins. We shall then cover President-elect Donald Trump's announcement of the formation of what he calls the Department of Government Efficiency. We then look at EcoBank's signing of interesting agreement with Tunes to cover remittances across Africa and beyond. Last but not least, we shall look at Telegram's restricted usage in Kenya in the last one week. So quickly, we move to BCG's Global Payments Report. I reviewed this interesting report last couple of days, and it's packed with some interesting insights. One of the things, however, I notice is that um, although there are some interesting pointers about Africa, Africa is not really covered much. We'll talk a little bit about that. So the Middle East and Africa region is projected to see the second largest jump in payments revenue seeing a growth of 7% compounded annual growth through to 2028. One thing that I found interesting, and I would think that that's mostly focused on the Middle East and North Africa region, and probably South Africa, not Sub-Saharan Africa. The report says card adoption and government investment in payment acceptance are driving most of the expected revenue growth in the region. I had a question mark about that. I'm like, really? Uh, by all intents and purposes, payments are really driven by mobile money across Africa. But then that's sub-Saharan Africa. That really doesn't cover Middle East and North Africa and South Africa, which are huge markets. So I would tend to put some credence to this, re to this report on card adoption. And that should be happy news to MasterCard, Visa, and the other big uh, payment players. The thing about this report, though, and the thing that we in Africa need to do is that this report doesn't really comprehensively take a deep dive into Africa-specific trends or challenges in payments. So the focus is mostly on global payments, the global payments industry. And here we are seeing revenue growth slowing with global component annual growth rate expected to drop from 9% to 5% by 2028. There is a continued tech modernization ongoing, which is crucial for staying competitive. For example, contrary to what you may think, America lags behind in, in payments infrastructure, especially bank-to-bank, it's just recently that this emphasis on digital payments is coming to the fore in the U.S. Generative AI, of course, is also going to be driving adoption uh, for the early movers, especially in the fintech ecosystem. As I said, it will be great to see more insights into the African ecosystem. We now move to Ethiopia's board move turning renewable energy into Bitcoin gold. You know, this is super interesting. Ethiopia, is, and this is not private sector. This is partnership between a Hong Kong-based uh, crypto player and the Ethiopian government. In the last nine months or 10 months, they have seen $55 million worth of Bitcoin. Now, if you consider the jump in BTC as it's known, 
uh, just looking at a graph here. From the moment that it was becoming clear that Donald J. Trump was going to be the next president of the U.S. That's from the seventh, from the sixth to the seventh of November, to right now, I'm seeing a humongous jump in Bitcoin. I'm looking at the graph here from uh, Coin Market Cup, seventy-four point zero three thousand dollars as of seventh of November. As we speak, as I started this recording, the dollar was at 88,000. It is now 89,000.25. So your guess is as good as mine. The amount of money that potentially this continent can make in the Bitcoin mining space. Obviously, there are issues that we have to deal with. There are issues of people not having enough electricity as it is. Electricity penetration rate is very low in Africa in comparison to other markets. If I look at the numbers, Ethiopia, 600 megawatts dedicated to mining with more on the way. It is now the fourth globally in Bitcoin mining hash rates. And this is a $250 million MOU with Hong Kong-based West Data Group. So what are the key takeaways for countries with cheap renewable energy? Number one, it can drive economic diversity. That's a huge opportunity. It can be a catalyst for infrastructure development. It can be a magnet for foreign investment. Alternative energy export strategy. And last but not least, there's a potential for tech advancement. But there are challenges. As I mentioned, balancing mining needs with population access to electricity and navigating the crypto market, volatility are very crucial. I mean, this crypto price, as I showed you just now, uh, as we are speaking, it has gone up by 0.25 again but it can as well drop tomorrow if just one statement from uh, DJ, DJ T, Donald J. Trump, or his right-hand man, Mr. Elon Musk, that can drop immensely. So this is going to be interesting to watch. Let's see how that, how that goes. My next story is about President-elect Donald Trump announcing the formation of the Department of Government Efficiency. Now, the acronym for this is DOGE, D-O-G-E. And if you're in the crypto space or if you follow fintech, you follow crypto, you will know that Elon Musk's crypto coin is also known as DOGE, D-O-G-E. I leave it to you to uh, fill in the glass, uh, Fill in the gaps whether there is any relation between the two. Okay, guys, I'm joking, right? But not joking also. So anyway, back to serious conversations on this. Uh, Trump has announced the formation of the Department of Government Efficiency. It's going to be led by Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy. To note is that this is really at least as of now, is not an official government department, but it signals a bold move to streamline U.S. federal operations and cut wasteful spending. This duo is tasked to first operate outside traditional government structures, offering advice on how to reduce the $6.5 trillion government budget overhaul federal agencies, processes. The goal is to complete this by July of 2026, and hopefully it will mark a leaner, more efficient government. Now, on the face of it, for me, lean government is a good conversation to have. It just means that we are cutting waste. And 
I'm left to wonder whether, if successful, it will have any significant ramifications about governance and how governments run across the world. Potential impact, if successful. Uh, it could inspire other governments or other leaders worldwide to adopt similar strategies. There seems to be a strong private sector influence in this conversation, so the involvement of private sector leaders like Musk may signal a shift towards entrepreneurial government models globally. Challenges critics uh, have raised uh, real concerns about potential conflicts of interest and the impact of drastic budget cuts on federally supported sectors. Needless to say, the world will be watching this super closely. The next story is to cover covering Ecobank Transnational. So Ecobank has signed an uh, agreement with Chills, uh, which is a fintech based out of uh, Singapore. Chills is, is mostly focused on aggregating quite a number of money remittance uh, platforms. For me, one of the most interesting things about this conversation is a number of things that I want to put to the fore for discussion. Number one, Ecobank has the largest pan-African footprint of any bank. About 35 or 36 countries covered with presence. They also have a big office uh, in Europe. I think in London or Paris, not sure. Not sure, not sure whether it's London or Paris. About 100 people are based in one of these uh, European countries. It makes Ecobank one of the largest from a footprint perspective, or probably the largest from a footprint perspective of any African bank. The opportunity for aggregating and making payments, uh, pan-African payments easier across the Ecobank ecosystem is probably one of the most important strategic conversations for any for banking or financial services across Africa. So this is crucial because connecting those and then connecting outside the continent uh, will just make the continent that much easier to connect with the global financial uh, services ecosystem, hopefully reduce the cost of remittances. Now, one of the key things that is important to note here is that the African corridor of remittances, money coming into Africa from different parts of the world, from Europe, from the Middle East, from the Americas, is the cost of these remittances is one of the highest in the world, anywhere between 8 to 12%. This needs to come down, and it needs to come down drastically. So hopefully, with this partnership, we'll see some movement in that space. My last story is on the issue of the degradation of the of telegram uh, service in Kenya in the last couple of days i think about a week some say this has is connected to the national exams ongoing uh, in Kenya the thing about it is that there's no official statement from the government i think and this is worrying this is worrying because my concerns really are threefold one the government should really exercise transparency and issue a statement outlining the measures it is using to curb cheating in exams. If this includes Telegram, so be it. Let, let, let the government justify why and how this is being used. I mean, this is a democracy. We need to see some level of transparency. And this is good for government because that looks, it looks good when it does things that look uh, transparent and nobody wants our children to be cheating in exams. So if this is actually focused on um, curbing cheating, then that's not necessarily a bad thing. However, the players again, the players in the telecom sector through their official lobby group Tespok, 
should also issue a statement confirming or denying that the government has ordered them to issue this blockade of internet services, specifically Telegram. And then we should also be told, why Telegram only? Why not WhatsApp and other platforms? Testbook should further tell the public how many times its members have received these government orders and whether they have complied with them. I think the above measures are crucial and they'll go a long way to allay fears and build confidence in how the government uses its powers to protect its citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll close here for this week and I look forward to more engagement next week. Thank you very much.